Hi everyone. Uh, good morning and welcome to chemistry lesson number two on the elements. Okay, so uh, I know there were some issues with the last uh, video that I recorded, so I'm going to do a slightly different format that will hopefully uh, make these videos shorter. And also I won't be playing the YouTube video since that was not very successful. Okay, so please start off your lesson just by on the PDF clicking on these two globes. Okay, and it'll bring up the link to the two YouTube videos. Okay, they're just some short videos just so that you can see some visual uh, things to back up what we're doing today. Okay, so um, after that, let's move on and we're going to do lesson number 13 uh, on this handout, okay, and what are elements, okay? And so we've got pictures here. This is 24 karat gold. Gold has a symbol AU. Okay, so gold has a chemical symbol of AU. Uh, over here, we have some gas. So, for example, maybe this is helium, helium that we put like in party balloons. Okay, and helium has a symbol HE. Okay, so you'll notice that the helium, that symbol actually totally matches up with the uh, name for helium, whereas gold, it has a symbol AU, and it doesn't match up at all because it's taken from the Latin name. Okay, lastly over here, we have an iron pan, a cast iron pan, and again, uh, iron is actually F-E, ferrous, uh, or ferric. Um, it's actually very close to the Finch name, for example, but again, it's based on the Latin words, okay? We are going to learn more about these chemical symbols tomorrow in tomorrow's lesson, and we're going to have an activity where we actually memorize all of these different symbols, okay? About 20, 20 something of them, okay? So that'll be a little fun exercise, and I'll also make a little cutout activity, just like we do in class, um, and you can even play bingo at home uh, with some family members if you'd like. Okay, okay, so here are some key terms. An element is a simple substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. Okay, so it's kind of like the most fundamental type of substance. Okay, now an element is made of atoms and those can be broken down into smaller parts. However, once you start breaking down the atom and separating the protons, neutrons, and electrons, it no longer actually stays. Um, it, it actually means that there are no, sorry, it actually means that that uh, when you break it down further, you can't actually call that thing the element. So, for example, if I were to look into this gold and break it down all the way and, you know, um, break it down into smaller and smaller pieces of gold until all you had was one atom, if I started to break apart that atom into, for example, uh, half of the protons on one side and half the protons on the other side, I'm actually changing the nature of the gold so that it is no longer gold. Okay, so I hope that kind of makes sense. Don't worry if you don't fully understand what I'm talking about. Okay, a symbol is a short way of writing the name of an element. Okay, so this is the symbol for iron, but I say iron. Okay, but this is the chemical symbol right here. Okay, let's keep going. So what are elements? So there are more than 110 known different kinds of atoms that have been identified at the present time. Okay, so actually the real number right now, because this is older, it's actually 118 uh, because this is an older handout, but I love these handouts because they're so clear um, and uh, easier for students to use. Uh, but really in the laboratories, they've either discovered or made a few more elements um, from, from the time that they printed out these handouts. This means that everything we know, every kind of matter must be made up of one or more of these 110 kinds of atoms, okay? So for this worksheet, we're not going to use 110. We are actually going to use, actually, yeah, let's change all of the 110 to 118. I hope that makes sense. Okay, sorry about that. You can just cross it out. 
Okay, and I'm going to change these all to 118 just because I think it's important to have accurate information. Okay, so for wherever you see 110, please change that over to 118. You can just cross it out. Okay. Um, okay, and so 92 of them, actually, I'll, I'll talk about that when we get down there, okay? Okay, so most matter is made up of two or more kinds of atoms, but some matter is made up of only one kind of atom. Any sample of matter that is made up of only one kind of atom is called an element. Element. Okay, so say after me, element. An element is a simple substance that cannot be broken down into simpler substances. Think about this. If there are only 118 kinds of atoms, there must be 118 different elements. There is one element for each kind of atom. The atoms of any one element are almost exactly alike. In addition, the atoms of any given element are different from the atoms of every other element. You know the names of some elements, gold, copper, iron, oxygen, iodine, and probably many more. Only 92 of the known elements are found in nature. The other, okay, so when I do 92 and I add 26, that makes up 118. So actually, there are 26 elements that have been made by scientists in the laboratory. Okay, so please change that number as well. Most of these have been made in very small amounts. In the future, more elements will probably be created. So the total number of known elements will increase. That's correct, okay? As we see, most elements are found in solid state. Some are found as gases. Only two elements, mercury and bromine, okay, so everyone say mercury, and everyone say bromine, are found as liquids at room temperature. Okay, and tomorrow I'm also going to give you a periodic table in our lesson. That way you can look up these and it even has a little legend that tells you which ones are gases and which ones are elements. The names of the elements can be written in symbol form. The symbols are signs that stand for something else. Here are some symbols that you may know. What does each one stand for? Okay, so think about this one. What does this one stand for? Let me know or let someone at home know. What does that stand for? Okay, so that's the money sign. What about this one? Percent. This one? Cents. This one is called the ampersand. Everyone say ampersand. Okay, and that's the symbol for and. And what's this symbol right here? So traditionally, this was the number or on the phone, on our phone, uh, on our dialing for phones, this was the pound symbol. Uh, but now currently, everyone calls it a hashtag symbol because of Twitter, okay? So uh, usually we would still use this for numbers, but a lot of uh, students know this as the hashtag symbol, okay? So here are rules for writing chemical symbols for the elements. So the symbol always begins with a capital letter. If there is a second letter, okay, so there's never actually a third letter, so let's just cross out this part right here. If there is a second letter, okay, it is a lowercase letter, so it's not a capital letter if, it's, if there's a second letter to it. No period is used at the end of the symbol unless it comes at the end of a sentence. Okay, so the symbols for the elements are all the same all over the world. It makes no difference what country you are in or what language is spoken. The language of chemistry is the same all over the world. Okay, and so the, the symbols are always the same. Uh, this is also for safety reasons as well, uh, just to make sure that everyone is on the same um, using the same standard, even the symbols in different languages are all the same, their standard, okay? And this is for safety reasons so that everyone can understand them.
Okay, let's see some questions about this. So more about atoms. Look at each figure below. Read the read about the figure, then try to answer the questions. This is the model of an atom. Different elements have different atoms. Sometimes the sometimes the differences are very slight. Now, how many different kinds of atoms are there? Okay, so let's look back. There are more than 118 different kinds of atoms. Okay. What do we call matter that has only one kind of atom? Okay, let's look back on this. Okay, most matter is made up of two or more kinds of atoms, but some matter is made up of only one kind of atom. This is called an element. Okay, so why don't we highlight that word right there even. Okay, let's highlight the important words. Okay, so 118 as well, and then the other one is 26. Okay, so what do we call matter that has only one kind of atom? We call it an element. So we'll do this part together, okay? So here we have Fe, and if you remember from the front page, that iron skillet, okay? that iron pan, Fe stands for iron. So if I were to take a chunk of iron, every single atom in that iron pan would be made of iron. The atoms of any one element are almost exactly alike. Each of the circles in the picture stands for one atom of the element iron. If we could just study one of these atoms, it would still have the properties of iron. The smallest part of an element is just one atom of that element, okay? So is it possible to study just one atom? I would actually say yes, but it is very difficult, okay? Why is it difficult? Because you need a special type of microscope, okay? That special type of microscope is called an electron microscope, okay? Only electron microscopes, and it doesn't mean that we're studying electrons when we have an electron microscope. An electron microscope uses electrons uh, almost as like light rays, so to speak, okay? And it, it shoots electrons at at the surface of an item um, to get really, really clear images of very small things. Uh, why is it very difficult? Because you need a special type of microscope. And also, it's because one atom is very small, okay? So we would never be able to break a piece of iron into smaller and smaller and smaller pieces until there was only one atom of iron, okay? Uh, just like the video said, if you even look at one piece of a grain of sand, for example, or one piece of dust, for example, even that one little piece of sand has millions and millions and millions of atoms in them, okay? Pretty mind-boggling, pretty crazy stuff, right? Okay, so now what I want you to do is complete each statement using the term or terms from below. Write your answers in the spaces provided. Some answers may be used more than once. Okay, so here are the words. Different, element, 17, one atom, and I'm going to, oh, sorry, everyone, I'm going to change these numbers, okay? So rather than 17, let's do 26. Okay, so let's do 26. 92 still stays the same, but I have to also change 110 to 118. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, atoms, 118 alike and solid, okay? So please everyone, for the rest of the uh, lesson, I want you to try your best with these, okay? So this one will be worth something like 10 marks, okay? 10 or 11 marks uh, for these 10 questions. Um, so you read these through, you fill in the blanks, and then please, if you need to, look up the answers right over here, okay? It's okay if you get them wrong, no worries, okay? 
uh, just try your best with it and put in the words, okay? Take your time with it. If you need to take a break, feel free to do so, okay? Um, again, over here, there are some true and false questions. So I'm gonna change these. I'm gonna put down 118 for these ones for this one, just because 110 was the number that we changed. 90 wasn't a number uh, that we talked about. So I'm gonna keep that as is since it's a true and false question, okay? Uh, I can keep this 92 as well, okay? But this 118, I'm gonna change it to 110. Okay. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna do those ones right there. Um, and then for these ones, I think we're gonna do this part tomorrow. Okay, yeah, so why don't we just do these ones today? So let's save this part for tomorrow. Okay, for tomorrow's lesson. Okay, so everyone just do this one page today uh, along with the notes from here and read through these, this, uh, this page over here. Okay, thank you and see you tomorrow.